Introduction theme back to the Papa Podcast next episode. Introducing the next Attack Bells. I mean, 16, number 16. Force 43 and 44. But first, the film The Expendables 2. The Legend of Curly's Gold. Now, I like the first one slightly more often than that, so I thought I'd give my impressions on the second, by which I mean of the second. So here it goes. <clears throat> this is Sylvester Stallone. Everybody rubbed good, cause that's my new thing I'm gonna say. Yeah, whatever. I'm Jason Statham. I'm just glad my movies don't have any good one liners for you to force in here. Well, fuck you, asshole. Easy, Arnold. As Bruce Willis, you know I got your back. Back, get it? Because that line about being back, it's really easy to drop into any situation. Yes, well, as Dolph Lundgren, I just hope that nobody forces me to suppress my natural accent again. Listen, all you alligators, I'm Jet Li, and that's five seconds. Contract up. I'm out of the movie. Gee whiz. As some guy from the Hunger Games, I guess I'll have to be the new Jet Li. Though being 16, I am, of course, just one mission away from retirement. I sure hope that nobody kicks a knife in my chest, while weirdly having someone else hold the knife in place. As Jean-Claude Van Damme, allow me to say... And I pronounce you man and knife. What the fuck, man? You're stealing my lines. Hey, fellas, I'm Chuck Norris. Yeah, I know, I'm great. Anyway, I'm just here to deliver a stolen joke. But if any of you happens to know how to get rid of the good, the bad, and the ugly theme, please tell me. You think that you guys have problems? My name's Randy Cooter. It means horny vagina. And that was the entire film. So, Force 43, the 43rd episode. We begin with the excitable girl being told that either she or Boring Douchebag will get a trip to America for space training. You see, the list was brought down to the airheaded girl and the guy who's constantly in the infirmary because of reasons, I'm sure. Actually, I think Lucy and Herr Beckham were in the runnings, but one of them worships Satan, and the other is a Nazi trapped on a satellite. So Excitable Girl gets excited for the knowledge that she could win a fabulous trip out of the country slash planet. Excited to the point where she squeezes at the faculty member who told her, which is to say Orko, whom she does not yet know to be the Donna Troy of the Space Monster Generals. And the squeeing goes like this. Oh my gosh, this is so perfect! Because ever since I was a little girl, I've been hearing these voices in my head from space, and I've been meaning to go visit them, but my boring douchebag friend won't let me walk outside his moon base because he says I'll blow up or something. The green-eyed man, who's also there, turns to Orko and says, You know, Orko, your only job is to tell me who's going to be the monster of the Ark. And that girl just told you she heard voices in her head from space. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, wait, sorry, boss. Um, yep, she's the Gemini monster. Don't know how I missed that. Oh, man, man the, the boss, boss hates me now. I hope an inner monologue will help. What's my thing? We now weirdly move on to Fjallsengard seeing Excitable Girl laughing hysterically while holding an evil space monster switch. It might be that several hours have passed and we haven't gotten to an intro yet, so they want to move the plot right along. <laughs> No, 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 but but there is an intro now. Introducing us to Excitable Girl being accused of vandalism she has no recollection of. Why, it's almost as if there's a Star Trek good-bad personality split thing going on. But what are the odds of that happening with a Gemini monster? Yeah, all right, so if you're familiar with any kind of fiction, you know how this goes, but to fill time, they're gonna do the whole shebang where Excitable Girl's friends turn on her because of her hysterically laughing double, causing mischief and such across the school. Mischief like trying to kill Queen Bitch by pushing her over a ledge. Luckily, Fjorsengard happens by around then, so he catches Queen Bitch and sees for certain that Excitable Girl is really the Gemini almost killer. By which I mean he sees her figure from a distance with her hair weirdly covering her face before she turns into a space monster, but that's probably damning enough. So after a brief fight, the monster runs off, but Excitable Girl Prime shows up after her, so they tie her up on the moon. I'm innocent, I tells you. It was my double. Doppelganger. I believe you mean doppelganger. That's just what a doppelganger would say. So I work for Quarry Doppelpopolis. <laughs> Stolen unfunny jokes. Excitable Girl gets pissed at her friends for showing the slightest bit of doubt before just letting her go, which they do. So she storms home to find that her parents are entirely too eccentric. Oh, and Excitable Girl's clone apparently messed up her room, and is in her room. You horrible bitch, you messed up my room, although my weirdly supportive and eccentric parents probably won't care. I'm you, so you just called yourself a bitch. Oh, I see, your conglomeration of my moral impulses, so of course you're not gonna overthink your response. Hey, you're the bitch, bitch! Plus, you have a freaky Mike Myers mask. Oh, the clone has a freaky Mike Myers mask. 
by the way, which the rest of Team Fjallsengard happens to see as Rainbow Joe passes them the school's security footage. Sifting through those, I'm sure he saw every other faculty member turn into a space monster, but it's not really relevant to the arc, so he doesn't bring it up. Oh yeah, you might think, uh, since Queen Bitch was attacked from the front earlier, that she would have seen the Mike Myers mask, but she doesn't really have lines this episode, so she kind of had to keep her mouth shut. But like I said, Rainbow Joe's got it sorted for them. So Team Fjallsengard teleports to Excitable Girl's room, and they chase her doppelganger to a more convenient place to fight. So when that happens, the monster starts to put up a good fight with exploding gambit cards and whatnot. Being a woman monster, though, she gets herself caught in a net pretty quick. Luckily for her, the green-eyed man's there to save the day for evil. He's also there, I suppose, to explain that Excitable Girl is fighting for dominance with her evil twin, and that that's nowhere near as sexy as it sounds. He also explains that in exactly 12 hours, the clone will be the new Excitable Girl. For you see, even though the clone's been around for days, by existing for 12 more hours, it will... Uh, well, for a visual demonstration of what's going on, we see Excitable Girl has grown a 5 o'clock Mike Myers mask, and on that dramatic note... No? Huh. Okay, also the doppelganger uses her space powers to make a duplicate, or, well, another duplicate, of herself that explodes. Because she couldn't have just thrown a card for that like she was doing earlier. Actually, this is kind of ballsy of the show. Because I'll admit, nobody talks about how the Gemini twins were triplets until that one turned out to be the underwear bomber. And that's why triplets aren't allowed to be born anymore. While the doubles double latches onto Donna Troy, blows up, and that's the end for reals. Uh, unless it isn't, in which case, just flip the cassette over for part two.